Welcome everybody to Google Cloud AI Innovators in Telecommunications. I'm Brian Krasick and I have with me a very special guest from VMO2. Anita, could you please introduce yourself? Thanks, Brian. I'm Anita Tadion and I run strategy transformation and planning in our network in VMO2. Well, uh, so that's a big title. There's a lot to unpack there. Indeed. And network is a key thing. And we've talked a lot about autonomous networks. What's your focus there on the autonomous network side? So I think what I should first do is actually talk about our strategy, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of um, sense. Our vision for our network is to have a connected experience so that customers love, trust, and will advocate. That translates into five major pillars for us. Nothing that you haven't heard before. Efficiency, simplicity, reliability, future-proofed, etc. All of those things are enabled by AI. Yeah. So this is the future network. We call it our network end state architecture. It's our strategy for the network for the future. And AI plays a part across all of that end to end. And now, so AI is something quite new, though. It is and it isn't. It depends okay. how you think about it over the last couple of years. It's a journey. Um, AI and data are intrinsically linked. We've been on our data journey for the last couple of years. We've moved a lot of our data into GCP through our partnership with Google. Um, I would say 70% of our really core data is in GCP now, what I call the messy data, the access data in the network, which is very important if and when we talk about digital twin, for example, so you can access that data very efficiently and very securely. Um, so we've spent time building our enablers, getting our data right, getting it cleansed, uh, building our operating model. We have an AI center of excellence in consumer and we do a hub and spoke model. So we're a spoke. We've got a lot of expertise in the network. We work closely with the center of excellence. We've got our own center of excellence. We've got our governance in place. So we are starting to run an AI council and Google has a seat at that. Um, and we also have built our roadmap. We started with a, a major first case, I would call it, autonomous planning. Uh, and that was targeted at our X, XGS Pond network. And um, XGS Pond, new technology, Greenfield. So it was a big decision. Do we go to HFC? Do we go to Greenfield? We want to bring cost per premise down significantly and we want to be able to scale rapidly. And we're aiming to scale to millions of households over a couple of years. So automating AI-enabled planning, design, and run for that network is pretty key. That's critical. I mean, so you, you started on the design and planning side of it, and then you're looking towards the future. You set your data foundations. That's right. A lot of time and energy there. You have to get the mappings right. And now you're at a phase where you're leveraging that AI. You have your center of excellence. You're going to apply it into the network as well. And um, again, back to some of the enablers. So to be able to then really leverage that to a autonomous, autonomous network concept, um, we've got our capabilities built for digital twin. We're building our AI factory, right? Again, that means we will be able to develop our use cases securely by design, right, right from the start. Really an, important to have those things in place in a way that are capability driven so you can um, replicate for multiple networks. We don't just have one network. Absolutely. We've got 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Uh, we've got uh, uh, HFC, we've got PON, et cetera, et cetera. And you've got to think and plan across all of that exactly. for this to be effective. Otherwise, exactly. I'm going to do autonomous for what? One of the networks and it's not solving the, the big issue. Exactly. You so you then come to your roadmap. We've done a proof of concept with um, XGS PON and our um, automated planning use case, we now scale to um, AI ops, which is another big bet for us, autonomous energy and monetization, which will probably be based on a 5G monet monetization use case. So those will be our big bets from a network perspective. And then we work with the center of excellence enterprise wide for other use cases. And how are you viewing? So you've developed a digital twin and you have a graph neural network. How are you creating that? Are you finding it's, it's meeting your needs? Um, is it emulating that myriad of networks that you have to? So that's where um, reality kicks in. Yes. Right? You don't build a digital twin for everything in one go. 
we've built the core capability and we've built it for PON. You then have to replicate that across 5G, 4G. Um, probably won't do it for 2 or 3G because we really should be shutting those down and we've got a roadmap. It could be for that. time to do that, it, yes. But, you know, um, so that's probably in, in and of itself to do all of that a two year roadmap. But we have done it for PON. And um, I think that's critical because that allows us to scale really fast in where we see the future growth of our business. Well, and, and to your point, you can't just turn up and turn it on a network. Yeah. 2G's been out there for a while, but you're now moving at a pace and you're saying you're going to do that within two years and think of that planning. That, that... is the ambition. Okay. Um, okay. But, you know, reality may well kick in, but that's the ambition. I think. The first thing is building those capabilities to TMF standards, which is yes. um, what we work to. And we have got a clear, what we call a digital end state architecture view of the level of maturity that we want to build those capabilities to. And we don't, we don't think we need to be a level five, right? We, we think four is probably four, four and a half is where and we And where do you think be. you are right now? Are you uh, more two, two, five, it three? Depends. depends on the network. Depends, depends on the network. Depends. Okay. So it really is variable. And the real pivotal point is when you've scaled enough at a level four across all of your networks, and then you've got to make trade-offs. Um, do you, which is what we're doing, um, extend from XGS Pond back into your core, right? Or do you then go to HFC where you've got a lot of density of customers, a lot of waste, you know, which really drives operations mad. You have to make judgment calls all the time. But it's a, it's it's an evolving as you stated before. Yeah. It's a journey. It's a journey. Now let's let's shift a little bit and let's talk about those agents. So after building a base and getting the digital twin, now you're looking at how is AI really integrating into that? What are you expecting it to do? What models are you using? So on and so forth. Again, evolving, right? Uh, I can't give you a single answer. That's a panacea. And, yeah. So we're looking at our operations and really trying to understand the work that we need to address so that as we set up for a Gentig, we do it right first time. Um, look, there's tension. Do we, for example, put a, a assistant in place, a knowledge assistant straight away, which could be really easy to do relatively, mm -hmm. or do we focus on our, again, relatively constrained resources and uh, the investment our partners are making like Google on actually predictive self-healing, um, to avoid issues happening in the first place so that you're using your own agents to actually manage Agentic. Right. And one is a longer burn, the other one gives you some immediate but small benefit that you might not scale or be able to reconstruct the work that you're doing. We're on that journey and we're making decisions every day on what we do, where we go, what do we focus on, and we need resources, cash to be able to do that. Well, I think this is the interesting part of the journey because it is always a trade-off and, and to, you're, you're always balancing risk, reward, yeah. benefit, uh, time and energy. And um, so when you look across the partnership and we're fortunate to have a strong partnership here, what are some of the benefits that you're seeing? Is it improving the time to market, leveraging the tools, um, the collaboration? What, what do you see across the partnership? So first of all, I think the partnership brings um, positive challenge it drives the right conversations. Um, they give us, if you like, um, more scale in looking at the right use cases. There is, um, you know, we co-invest, you know, time and effort by people is an investment. Very that's, true. That's the equivalent of cash. They bring um, access to tools um, that we can deploy and they also bring access to new partners who bring technology to support our ambitions. You know, we've got a very um, fluid operating model. We've got a mix of in-source, outsource, customized, off the shelf. We try and make the best decision rather than a pre-prescribed formulaic approach. But what we're finding is Google as a partner is bringing a whole suite of those capabilities to the table um, and we can use them as and when. I tell you what, Anita, it's really a pleasure to be on this journey with you and just having this conversation and seeing how you're thinking about the, the network and bringing autonomy to that and all the different technologies and the trade-offs. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you, Brian.
And that's it for now in Google Cloud AI Innovators and Telecommunications.